everybody, Cindy Daycheck here from Queen Bee Creations. This is a video in our series on tips and techniques. Um, the clip that you're going to see has been taken from a complete video on refinishing a big chest on chest um, dresser from beginning to end. But what we thought would be helpful was to be able to pull out some of the key techniques for those of you that just want to pick up something new and jump right to it. This is for you. So this particular technique is taking gold leaf and using it in a slightly different way than you may be familiar and really opening up some versatility with it. I hope it gets your creative juices flowing and I hope that you find it beneficial. If you do and you like it, then please hit like, subscribe. This is a little bit of a different effect that we're doing with the gold leaf. And usually because you see the solid leaves um, attached on and you've got strong and bold kind of gold areas on the cabinet. And I wanted something a little bit different. I wanted a little bit more of a crackle look. So if you've seen furniture where it's got the crackles on the top and you see an under color coming through, I wanted a little bit of that effect. I wanted to use the gold in a way that it would look almost like that. So what I am doing is I am using kind of a crackle texture, um, kind of a, a, a stamp pattern. And you can see that it's pretty flexible, which kind of allows me to come up and around some of the corners. What's nice is I'm not looking for this to look perfect, so thank God for that because a lot of the detail in the raised areas on this cabinet would make that awkward. And I've got you kind of zoomed in here so that you can see as I apply some of the gold leafing more than anything else. Now, I will say, oh my goodness, of course, I had the uh, basic sheet out here to be able to show you what the crackle effect looks like. Um, and the dog was sleeping on top of it. But you can see kind of that tight crackle look and that's what we're going after on this one. Now for this I'm using a stamp. I could have chosen to just simply add on some gold paint on this and then stamped the paint on but it would have given a slightly different look. It wouldn't have been as intense gold. Um, the gold leaf, I, I can, I can uh, as well sort of burnish back a little bit. It looks a little bit richer than just the gold paint, and uh, I think it's kind of a cool effect. I practiced on the side, so I cheated a little bit. I practiced on the side, but this is where we're going. So I need the stamp of some kind. You could hand paint on, you could just uh, take a print, paintbrush and smear. What we're going to be doing is we're adding what's called um, sizing. So I happen to have this, I'm just shaking it up a little bit here. Um, I happen to have the sizing, so that's what I'm using, but you could use any kind of decoupage medium of your choice. You could take, you know, the old school glue, the white school glue that you like to, when we were kids, put all over our fingers and then peel it off. Um, you could use that glue and just water it down slightly. It's going to be too thick coming out, so you just water it down slightly so you get it so it's fairly liquid, which means that we can, we can apply it onto our stencil. I have got a package of gold leaf, and if you haven't used gold leafing before, I've got a couple of pieces that are just little. I'm going to put those off to the side. But it is very thin, let me grab, it is very thin, it is very, very wavy, and my one word of warning is this sticks to anything, um, meaning you get some of the sizing on your fingers, you, um, you sweat a lot on your fingers, I mean it will stick to anything. So there's a couple of tricks to trying to apply it so that you'll get it stuck on your piece. And not on your fingers um, but as well when we go to brush it away you are going to get little pieces of the gold leaf falling all over the place so one of the 
the things that I do to kind of keep control of that a little bit is I do have my little handheld rack off to the side and with that then I'm going to be um, periodically vacuuming. I'm not going to do that on the live because it'd be way too loud for you in your ears but it just kind of keeps it a little bit controlled and especially since my dog likes to walk through whatever I'm doing which white paw prints in paint across my dark hardwood floor will attest to. So all I'm going to do is pour some sizing out onto this pie plate and to apply it onto my all right so I got some out of my pie plate to apply it to the surface of my of my uh, stamp pad here I'm just going to use what's called a brayer now you could just use a paintbrush um, I happen to have a the, the brayer which is just like a little fine roller just because I want it going across the top of this more than I want it sitting down into the little creases but you know go with what you've got on hand um, you could just take a, a damp sponge and wipe it and, and just kind of wipe it across because we're not looking for per for perfectly even coverage we're just looking to have it kind of in rough patterns and and going up and around curves and things it'll be okay so all I'm doing is rolling my brayer into the medium and you can kind of see it rolling around there so you can see it's pretty liquid so I'm just going to get some onto my brayer here and I am going to pick a spot here and I'm going to roll it on. And I'm trying to think in terms of where on my stamp it's going. So I'm going to aim for this corner here and uh, I'm in and out of the frame, but you don't need to see me as much as you want to see, see the technique and what we're doing. So I'm, I'm rolling some of the sizing just with my brayer onto that textured mat. I'm going to lift it up and I'm just going to kind of roughly press it into a bunch of my grooves. And you can see this is not pretty. This is not getting it perfect and exact which I think if I did it in paint would be an issue. I would get smearing of the paint, um, which would create a bit of, a, of an awkward look for me. When you are, when you're lifting up some of your gold leaf, because these babies, I mean, if you want to sneeze, sneeze away, <laughs> sneeze away from this. They are very flimsy. So one of the easiest things to do is there is always a divider sheet between each of those gold leaf sheets. If you lift it using that sheet and then use that sheet to apply it, you're going to take that and with that sheet kind of smear it down into the creases. Now you can see this piece is hanging off the side because there was no, no glue over there. Right? We didn't have any of that side. And you can see already I'm stuck to my gold leaf. Okay, But I can take some of my smaller pieces to some of those shiny areas where I know some of that sizing is still exposed and not covered. And then I'm going to want another big sheet to kind of stick up coming up into these grooves and these creases and across the top where I have some more of that sizing. Okay, now it does not look pretty at this stage. I get that, but also here's what happens. So you can just use this to burnish some of that, that leaf down in, make sure it's sticking. I also like to Take if I can find it. Okay, I also like to take just a brush and just kind of lightly kind of burnish it down in a little bit more. Okay, now for some projects, this is almost done. 
this is what the gold leafing would look like where you have um, the leaf in, in many of the spots. You would just continue to burnish it to get a little bit of the excess off, but you're looking for some of that, that um, uh, you know, the solid kind of coverage with that. And I've done that on many pieces. It did nothing wrong with that look, but it was a little bit more of a contrast and a little bit harsher than what I was looking for with this particular project. So what we've done with adding that sizing in kind of those, those crackle spots is that as much as this looks like it's adhered all over, it actually isn't. It's not stuck in all these spots because there isn't the sizing in all of it. It's going to follow all the little cracks and the grooves. So we need this to set up a little bit, just dry off a little bit more. So you can see even like up here, there's spots where it just wants to peel away because I didn't have any sizing there. It's, it's not an all over paint. Otherwise I could just simply have taken my sizing and applied it with a brush. I wanted to have that smooth kind of gold leaf finish. With this, what I want to do is now that it's kind of almost dry, yeah, that's not tacky anymore, is I want to take just one of my bigger stencil brushes. Okay, so stencil brushes are fairly stiff. They're not made for painting this way. They're made for pouncing. And I'm going to look to remove all of the gold leaf. So hence the need for, I need to move my, my stamp from under, under it because it's kind of damp from some of the sizing and I will end up with all of it, all of these little bits and pieces stuck onto it. Okay, so all I'm going to do and why I have you kind of zoomed in is that you can see I'm going to start rubbing fairly hard, right? And kind of in a circular motion to be able to pull away all of the gold leaf that's sitting just on the surface of the piece in between all of those little lines that were on my on my stamp so you get more of this crackle kind of look and finish and you can see already see the contrast see how how softened this ends up looking as opposed to just the solid gold leaf. Again, a great look depending upon what you're after. For this, I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle. I wanted it to be a little bit more aged. I wanted to have that crackle look. I liked the thought of this in my head and, and I'm sure people have done this. I'm sure people have done this. I just haven't, haven't happened to see it. But I wanted that gold leaf effect and some of that look, but I didn't want to have that solid, harsh kind of look. But you can see kind of the impact of this look. You're not gonna want to do it everywhere, so I'm not covering the entire piece. I'm doing it more kind of on some of the, the edging, some of the corners. I'll do it a little bit um, more in some areas, a little bit less in others, but um, I'm really kind of, really kind of loving how it's turning out. So I'm just coating my brayer again. And you have to think a little bit strategically on your um, on your, your stencil here, on your, on your stamp, because I'm using it in different ways and, and I have to be thinking about when I turn it up, where, where is that medium actually going to go on my piece more than anything else. So, we're just kind of coating it in some areas, pushing it on, trying not to move it too much and smear it around because I can always add more on afterward if I feel inclined to. I need to let it set up just a minute or two to be able to uh, dry off a little bit, okay? And then Take my gold leaf sheet and press it into the area. And so we're just pressing it in, all right? I can pull off some of those loose edges and you will up close be able to see where there's still a little bit of that, that sizing or that glue 
hanging out on the piece. So you can start to attach some of these pieces in some of those areas so that you're not getting as many wispy pieces just getting brushed off and floating around your home <laughs> than anything else. Take my dry brush and just kind of burnish it in a little bit more. Right? You can already see some of the pieces that aren't adhered just flying away. <laughs> I'm, I'm creating my my own little uh, my own little look. Usually, usually I'm walking around with paint in my hair and paint on my clothes. And I was at a at a celebration of life, and people were saying, "Um, you got paint in your hair?" And I'm going, "I know. It's a constant, and uh, there's not much I can do about it. It's like it just gets in there and lasts a couple of washings. <laughs> just the way it goes." Right, so you can see that once this is once this is dried and the gold has has adhered to it, you're not having to be that delicate with with the gold anymore. Right, once it's on your piece, you're able to uh, to to kind of manhandle it. You can take a fine sanding pad to it to be able to soften the look a little bit if you wanted. Um, here, I just really am able to to burnish. With this kind of pattern, with the crackle pattern, I just know that if I have a big solid area of gold, that I know that not all that gold has adhered, right? And then just brush away some of those, some of those little decorative gold flecks that are going to be decorating you and your home. So hopefully you have an area that is not your, your living room that you're able to do this in. I hope to see you soon for the next project.